on UFC 205 on November 12th against Eddie Alvarez. McGregor still talking about Floyd Mayweather, even though Floyd said last week he is ready to move on. Max, break it down for us. What is going on here? Uh, you know, you got to love Conor McGregor. He's the best talker who can fight. Yeah. Floyd's the best fighter who can talk. And, and of course, so you put those two names together, it's a huge promotion. Here's what's going on. You ain't going to beat Floyd Mayweather in the ring if you're the same size as Floyd Mayweather. Triple G is bigger. There are guys who, you know, Vladimir Klitschko would beat Floyd Mayweather. He's a heavyweight. But if you're the same size as Floyd, you ain't going to beat him in the ring. You're also not going to beat him at the negotiating table. His entire career has proven that with networks, with other fighters. He's the best, and his team is the best at negotiating the best deal. So he gets the lion's share against anyone. Now, there are fighters who bring something to the table. Canelo Alvarez, you got to give him a piece. He, you know, he brings something. Uh, Manny Pacquiao brings a lot. You got to give him a big piece. Still, Floyd gets the lion's share. So here he is essentially negotiating with Conor McGregor. And Conor McGregor's like, uh-uh, time out. Go get me my hundred million. And Floyd's like, well, I, you know how this works? I'm the guy. I get the most money. <laughs> yeah. But here's where Conor has extra leverage that most Floyd opponents at this level don't. In, in, the, in the octagon, Floyd has a 0% chance to beat Conor McGregor. Conor McGregor would beat him easily, early, zero risk for Conor McGregor in the octagon against Floyd Mayweather. It is exactly the same in the ring for Floyd against Conor. Conor got no shot. That's easy money. That's easy work, as Floyd would say. So that's actually leverage for Conor. Because where else does Floyd Mayweather get to make an event that big where his opponent poses absolutely no in-the-ring risk? Very good point. And I think at some level even Conor knows that. And so at the negotiating table, it's like, no, 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 no. You ain't going to get the lion's share. It's not going to be the percentage you think it is. Look how easy this night. I mean, like, you ain't going to find easier money than this. And I think Floyd also knows that at some level. And so the negotiation goes on. Floyd says, I'm walking away publicly because it seems to give him leverage. But Connor has plenty of leverage here. Here's where it gets interesting. You know, I told you Floyd called me the other night. I thought he was calling me to congratulate me because I'm going to be calling the Manny Pacquiao fight on November 5th. But he was actually... Congratulations, oh, yes, by the way. That Thanks is going to so be must see. Well, you know, oh, I, it I can't is. wait. I, I'm hoping I make you proud, brother. I'm you hoping will. I know you will. You do this already. This is my first time ever doing color commentary for a fight. So I'm, I'm going to be you're nervous. Gonna be uh, you're going to be great. But I'm looking forward to November 5th in Vegas at the Thomas and Mack Center. But let me say this. Floyd didn't call about that he called about something else but you know since i had him on the phone i took the liberty of asking him about this kind of great he said yeah man i called it off he said brother gotta know his place you know i mean wait a minute now i'm all about my business i'm in i'm in this for business you know so it said to me that he really he he doesn't really want to retire he's comfortable all right bought some new property in times square he's gonna be making seven figures a month for the rest of his life i mean he's floyd is fine he doesn't need anything but he has no problems with making more money you know and you're absolutely right he is about the business of making sure he's going to get the lion's share but here's the thing about floyd and you can confirm this better than me this is just the impression that i've gotten throughout the years communicating with him leonard ellaby and others Floyd ain't the kind of dude that just wants to make his money and don't want you to make yours. He might hate promoters making theirs. He might hate, make the, hate the networks getting all, so much money. But he has no problem with a fighter getting money. I remember that I was with, I, I had spoken to Floyd after the weigh-in the night of, the night before he fought Pacquiao. He was so disgusted with Pacquiao because of the share that Bob Arum and Top Rank had ended up getting, you know, for Pacquiao's person, you know, Pacquiao, you know, he owed them. I mean, borrowing money, all of this other stuff. That's too complicated to get into. But the point is, is that he's saying, we went through all of this to make sure you get this money. And there's still some of that money that you ain't getting. What the hell is wrong with you? He was talking about Pacquiao. Called them stupid. He was disgusted with Pacquiao. He respects Conor McGregor from the standpoint that he elevates the marketability, brings the dollars in, and he's not going to let Conor McGregor get more than him. But he has no problem with Conor McGregor getting his share so long as Floyd gets his own. And so I think when you look at it from that perspective, I think you have to look at it and appreciate it and understand that this is something that could potentially still happen. Because if Conor McGregor continues to smoke dudes in the UFC, it's a big deal that he beat Nate Diaz, because that was at 170. 
he really fights at 145. 45, yeah. And so for him to move up 25 pounds, if he moves down but still dominates and steamrolls over everybody in his path, even though you and I both don't believe he could touch Floyd, the question is, what if he does touch him? You see what I'm saying? Because you what about, I don't believe that either. in the boxing ring. I, I, hey, I don't believe it something either. else. Yeah. Floyd got no, no, no. shot in the knockout. Floyd got no shot. Conor got no shot in the boxing. I totally agree with you. But what I'm saying is the the mystique with boxing. There have been plenty of times, and I don't believe he touched. Well, I don't even think he get a headshot in. Right. Okay. But what I'm saying is the mystique of boxing, the intrigue, the allure of boxing, is when you walk into a ring and you know. If this person catches you, see, if Conor McGregor didn't have power, plus he was a UFC fighter coming to fight Floyd, then we're wasting our time. But because he has knockout power, you do Here's find yourself asking, OK, what if this dude caught him? Now, I don't believe it Here's will the problem, happen, Stephen a. but that's the intrigue. Here's the problem. Just like I said, Conor McGregor has a lot of leverage here because it's easy work for Floyd and a huge payday. Mm -hmm. And so Conor's like, I want my piece. Um, Floyd also has leverage here because UFC ain't boxing where you can cherry pick. Right. Floyd has fought a lot of fighters, but he has also cherry picked in the higher weight classes. Right. When he was 130, 135, he fought everybody. Pounds, he fought everybody. He fought everybody. As he got bigger, he waited to the right time where they represented minimal risk, maximum reward, which is what you're supposed Except to do. Except with Canelo, though. I don't Can, know well, Canelo is still ascending, yeah. but there's always an excuse for Floyd. He, he, people are always, no matter what Floyd does, he'll be criticized. Right. He was too young, he was too old, right. and yet I am here saying that, in fact, I don't believe the outcome would be any different, but Canelo was 22. Pacquiao was older, and that fight was past its expiration date. Same thing with Shane Mosley, etc. Um, Floyd, as I say, has flipped the paradigm, along with Al Heyman, his manager, advisor, has flipped the paradigm in boxing, fighting, combat sports, is exploitation. We, the fans and the networks, exploit fighters. We want to see you in tough blood and guts. Forget about the fact that you're brain damaged later on in your career, right? Your kidneys don't work. But right now, we want to see you prove all that stuff. The fighter, on the other hand, is saying, no, wait a minute. The fighter's manager, rather. They're saying, we want the most money for the least risk. Right. I don't want to walk around brain damaged with bad kidneys later in my life. Right. I don't want to shorten life expectancy. So Floyd and Al Heyman have been so successful at flipping that paradigm, there's a backlash. Because they have out-negotiated the other side, meaning the networks and the fans, by so much that he's made hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars without taking the same risks that the fans wanted to see him take. And this is more of the same there. The risk for Conor is as follows. The UFC is not boxing. You can't get away with that. you got to fight world-class fighter after world-class fighter in their primes, whoever the biggest name is. Therefore, no one's going undefeated for too long. That's right. So if Conor continues to do this, he could lose. He could lose to Alvarez. He could lose. It's not that he's not excellent or even better than Alvarez. Wrong night, one split-second mistake, you can lose that in the UFC. No question. So, so, Connor's, so Floyd got leverage there. Like, if you lose a couple fights, it's not worth it anymore. Yes, right. You might have strike while the iron's hot. Right, right but Floyd don't mind catching cashing another nine-figure check, and that's what he's after. And one of the things that he did to accentuate that point was highlight how I'm busy getting on Oscar De La Hoya for Hyde and Canelo from Triple G. Mm -hmm. Floyd is like, man, I can't knock Oscar. And you know their history. Right. He's like, I can't knock Oscar. He said, that's smart business. Right. Good for him. Looking out for the fighter. Smart. The fighter's business interests and the fans'